Good afternoon, and welcome to this last Sunday of Ordinary Time and also the Feast of Christ the King. There was an artist who wanted to create a statue of Christ the King. He started working on a clay model, picturing Christ with his arms upraised, his head back, and a joyful expression on his face. It was a triumphant Christ, much like the picture of Christ St. Paul gives us today in the second reading. But when the artist went to bed, it started to rain, and the moist air blowing in the window made the clay in his statue begin to, snap, to um, sag. When the artist saw his work in the morning, Christ's arms were down, his head was bowed, his shoulders drooped, and the expression on his face looked sad. Our readings give us both images of Christ the King today, as our um, crown and crucifix illustrates before the lectern. The triumphant Christ and the suffering Christ, identifying himself with the poor and hungry, the thirsty and the persecuted. And he tells us, as you did it for the least of my brothers and sisters, you are doing it for me. Tonight we are remembering and praying for Lucille Simon, and tomorrow our Mass is for Mike and Katie Spreckelson, who are celebrating their silver wedding anniversary. Our sanctuary light will burn this week in honor of Walter and Annabelle Bush. The Faith Formation Committee will meet this Tuesday, the 22nd, at 7 p.m. We will welcome three new members, Ann Dickin, Rosie Newhart, and Caleb Payne. Our Mass of Thanksgiving is this Wednesday evening at 6. If you are able, join us as we raise our prayers of thanksgiving to God. Because there should be ample room in the church, we will not have the, um, the uh, Mass uh, over in the hall. And lastly, ladies um, are asked to sign up for the Christmas party, which I think is the first week in December. If you haven't attended, I would encourage you to think about it. It's a, a beautiful way of living the first part of our theme, Together in Love. Now let us rise. The opening hymn can be found in the songbook number 736 to Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King.
Lord Jesus, you came to show us the way to the kingdom of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to show each other that way. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, fill us with your life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Almighty, ever-living God, your will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, Jesus, as King of our universe. Grant, we pray, that all of creation may render you service, ceaselessly proclaiming your praise forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him King of Israel. The word of the Lord. The Lord is King, the Most High. Rejoice because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. The Lord O 
according to the decree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord in it are set up judgment seats seats for the house of David the Lord is King the most high over all the earth a reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Colossians Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross, through him whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ from God. Even the soldiers jeered at Jesus, and they approached to offer Jesus wine. And so they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. Above Jesus, there was an inscription that read, this is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other rebuking him said in reply have you no fear of god for you are subject to the same condemnation and indeed we have been condemned justly for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes but this man has done nothing criminal then he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus, remember me. These words are from our gospel this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
There's a nice little saying that I think is so appropriate. Everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, then it's not the end. Now this little saying I think is exactly what's going on in our reading this evening. For it seems kind of strange that we would have this reading of Jesus in perhaps one of the, well, the worst moment of his life. Tortured and dying. I don't think any of us would think that's the greatest thing of our lives. But that's exactly why Jesus came. It's exactly why Jesus was sent from God. To show us the extent of his love. That that love would reach even through our death all the way beyond into our new life in the resurrection. And so today when Jesus is hanging on the cross, treated as a criminal, punished with one of the worst punishments that Rome could ever hand out, you know, Pontius Pilate, he was very interested in keeping law and order, being tough on crime. I'm sure we've heard that before. Well, he's going to be tough on crime. He was notorious for crucifying all kinds of criminals and not really worrying about whether or not they were innocent. I mean, if it can be proven right off the reel, okay, maybe, but who worried about that? He wanted to project an image so that he could go on in his political career to Rome. So he was going to be tough on crime. Anyone that would revolt, rebel, fight against the authority of the Roman power. And so it was the leaders of the Jewish people that didn't care for Jesus at all whipped up all kinds of trouble and Pilate even though he suspected that Jesus might be innocent said okay you take him and you crucify him get out of here I don't want to hear from you no more and so here was Jesus hanging on the cross and everybody saying well look Pilate had this sign the Jewish leaders didn't like it but Pilate did it this guy, I think he was getting his digs on the, on the Jewish leaders because people were saying that he was like the king, greater than King David. That was the Messiah. Everybody was saying he was the Messiah, a king greater as, great as David, greater than. Well, Pilate didn't care for that kind of talk and neither did really the leaders. They didn't like Jesus' teaching about, okay, you make up all these laws, but you don't do a darn thing to help anybody out to live them. Whoops. Technical difficulties. Uh, brother. Yes. This thing just acts like every now and then. Move it away a little bit. Maybe that'll do it. Okay, well, I think I'm back in business. Well, at any rate, so here it was, Jesus hanging on the cross, kind of a victim of other people's selfishness, I suppose. And here, when he was in his last moments, people, soldiers, passerbys, Okay, you got this sign that says you're king. Now, we just come off of kind of this uh, notion of royalty with Queen Elizabeth and see how royalty can truly inspire people. Well, the people thought, okay, if he was this great king, then he had all the power he needed to save himself. He raised Lazarus from the dead. He, he went around and cured all kinds of people. Okay, Jesus, use this power for yourself. If we had it, or that power, we would use it, I'm sure. Well, that is not why Jesus came. 
That was not why he was given all this. He was given this to show us something about ourselves, about our lives, and about the love of God. And so when they say, Jesus, save yourself, come down off the cross. No. Jesus was saving himself, and he was saving all of us. Hanging on the cross, not coming down to the cross. That's all we needed was someone, oh, look what he can do. Now, I want to stay alive forever, Jesus, on this earth. No, we're not going to be on this earth. Jesus over and over said nothing in this, any, any material thing. No, no kingdom on this earth lasts. We like to think it does, but it doesn't. And so Jesus was saving us for where we belonged. Saving us for life with our Father in heaven. Well, here we have two sides. We get a chance to make up our minds. Here, one criminal. One criminal said, well, okay, Jesus, save us. You say you're so, you're so powerful. That's what everybody says about you. Well, you just gets angry at Jesus, mad at Jesus, because Jesus is not be doing the king stuff like he thinks he ought to be doing. How many times do we do that with God? You're not acting the God I kind of want. Well, then the other criminal says, why are you like this? Why do you do these things? I mean, you know, maybe someone could tell us that at times. Why do you get all worked up? What you're going through, you created. You set up the circumstance one way or the other. And now you're just suffering the consequences. But, you know, we just, it's easier just to blame God and not see my part in all this. Well, the criminal, Jesus says, the criminal says to him, he says, look, Jesus, I know what I've done and I know what I've well, I probably don't deserve any good from you, but would you remember me? Would you think about me? Would you care for me? And that's exactly what Jesus does. Yes, I do. And now you'll understand the love that I am showing you for all eternity. Jesus, remember me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us now stand as once again we profess our beliefs. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, died from God, the light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, man, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in our Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Again, we bring our needs to our Father in heaven. 
for Pope Francis that in his humility he may teach us all how to reverence the one true King. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of forgiveness that we may be moved to forgive all who have injured us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our nation that they may recognize the source of their authority and be guided by God's wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all peoples of the world whose lives are torn apart by strife, may they experience the saving power of Christ the King. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are seeking the Lord, may they find him reflected in the kindness and mercy shown by our community of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be traveling this Thanksgiving season, may God guide them safely on their journeys. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Lucille Simon and for the prayers we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, you truly are the Lord of all creation. As life continues always, we know that things will be okay in the end, for you are God of us all, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Offertory Song can be found in this songbook, number 727, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Pray down, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, this holy sacrifice by which all of humanity is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that Jesus himself may bestow upon all the nations of our world gifts of unity and peace. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus, who lives one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Yes, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that always, everywhere, we give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, for you send Jesus to us as your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, anointed with the oil, oil of gladness as priest and king of all creation. And so, offering himself on the altar of the cross, he might accomplish for all of us the mysteries of the greatness of your love, making all created things subject to him, that he might present to your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so we join angels and archangels in heaven, praising you as we sing. rightly gives you praise for through Jesus our Lord Jesus Christ the King of the universe you have created our very world giving life to all things and now you call us to be holy for you never cease to gather each of us to yourself therefore Lord we humbly ask by your spirit to graciously make holy these gifts that they may become for us the body, the blood of Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim. Therefore, Lord, we celebrate this memorial 
of the saving passion of Jesus, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you our thanksgiving. Look, we pray upon the sacrifice of your church as we recognize the very sacrifice of Jesus for us all. Grant that we who are fed by the body and blood of Jesus and filled with his spirit may now become one body, one spirit with Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her loving spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Maurice, and all of the saints, for it is on their prayers that we rely for your help each day. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of everyone in our world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your church here on this earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, and all the people that you come to gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family gathered here today. For in your compassion, O merciful Father, we ask that you gather to yourself all of your children scattered everywhere in our world. Amen. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we ask that you give their spirit kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we all hope to enjoy forever the fullness of joy and peace, surrounded by the greatness and majesty of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Remembering our Father in heaven, who truly cares for us unto eternity, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from every distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of all in your church. Graciously grant to each of us peace and unity, for that is in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Always knowing who is the master of all the universe, let us be about sharing a peace with one another.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion song can be found in this songbook, number 728, The King of Glory.
let us pray. Having received this food of immortality, we ask, O oh Lord, that glorifying in our obedience to the commands of Christ, we may know him truly as the king of the universe, truly timeless in his power, for he lives with us now eternally as part of the kingdom forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. There will be a short practice after Mass, or mass to um, polish up on a new song. Um, the closing song is number 733 in the songbook, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Mm -hmm.